I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. I would be happy to. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jagosinski is excused, excused as I understand it. All right. I am here. Lisa Collins. Here. Tim Menninger. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Jeff Young. Here. Thank you. Okay, with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, board norms reflection, I would just remind you that the board um, norms are in our packets, and if you take a look at those as we meander through the meeting this evening. Um, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. A motion. I have second. a motion and a second. Okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Seeing no one moving forward, I would move on to item number eight, district administrator's report. Um, Dr. Carlson is not here this evening. I have a note that I, um, he asked me to share with you if I could. Thank you to the Board of Education for allowing me to be absent tonight as I am enjoying some long anticipated vacation. As I finish my time in the school district officially on June 30th, I want to express my appreciation to the Board of Education, school district employees, students, parents, and those throughout the Holman area school community for allowing me to be a part of this school district for the past seven years. Much has been accomplished during this time that has resulted in positive opportunities for our students, which is why we are all here and why we do what we do each and every day. I've been asked several times what I am most proud of from my time here and what I will miss the most. The answer is the same to both questions. The people I've had the privilege of working alongside with as together you have done great things for kids. I look forward to hearing about the exciting story that continues to be written for this school district. I wish you all the best as you engage in service together in order to educate every student to achieve global success. Thank you for all you do, Dr. Dale Carlson. So I appreciate that note and I think the rest of the district administrators report you've received in written format so then moving on to reports and discussions uh, parent transportation contracts this is going to be kind of an interesting evening because Dale isn't here Jay is not here and Beth who is supposed to do this is not able to attend um, so I would just note you have a copy of the position paper the parent transportation it's very routine the parent transportation contracts as we have signed um, and approved the last few years this is not on this evening's um, consent agenda so if you have any questions please reach out right away and we to Beth um, or um, to Christina and we will make sure that your questions are answered um, I would move on and Melissa Cates I don't see Melissa yet either so I know that we have a position paper on the hope um, contracts as with the other uh, papers or as with the others um, they looked at the disbursement for longevity first and then the basic the base wage increase of a 1.51 which cumulative is a 1.62 raise which is what all of the other contracts that we approved are and this is on the consent um, agenda this evening so if you have any questions I will do the best I can or maybe Julie Holman can help us too if there are is that the last of the I think that is it Julie is. that is the last okay. correct yes Okay, then moving on to preliminary budget update. Julie Holman, um, sh her first opportunity to present in front of the board, and I told her I will, will safeguard her. She did this presentation to myself um, and Dr. Carlson previously, and it's a very good report, so she'll do just fine. I'm very confident. So, Thanks, Cheryl. As long as the technology agrees, because it just went black there. <laughs> is it on your screen now? It is not on this one. 
on the one behind you, so I'll just. Okay, so turn around here. and look. You can turn around. <laughs> It's kind of weird. It's like no signal is what it's saying, so to us. Jan's here. I'll just let her work with it. <laughs> okay, we'll let you proceed, Julie. You can. St okay. <clears throat> Okay, this evening I'm going to give a preliminary budget report. Um, this is a follow-up for all the discussion we've had in the spring around Governor Walker's proposed budget. And tonight um, we're just going to give you an, an update on the input variables that were presented in December, the budget memo spreadsheet that was presented in February, and um, where we currently stand. So we'll talk about some confirmed um, variables as well as some that are still outstanding and the impact. Where you see IV, that stands for input variable, again from December, that was brought to the board, and where you see um, BMS as a acronym, that stands for budget memo spreadsheet, that was presented on February 9th. We started in December uh, with a projection of a 5% increase on health insurance premiums. Um, the confirmed uh, renewal rate is a minus 5%, and that is a savings of approximately 360000 over the projection. That 360000 has been reduced by the, um, the exposure created by Plan 3 moving the um, the coinsurance amount, the HRA from coinsurance to the second half of the deductible. So that creates a little greater exposure that will actually expend those dollars. And so that has um, come off the top of the savings. Next is the dental insurance. The input variable was two and a half percent increase and it came through flat or no increase and that's an approximately $5,000 savings for next year. The input variable for wages was 2%. The consumer price index urban for July 1st is 1.62%. That's the percentage that was applied to base wages. And um, after tonight's approval of the HOPE group, we have all groups approved. And the approximate um, savings from 2.5% 2 2 to 1.62 is 105,000. In February, Dale presented 510,000 in estimated staff increases. Out of the 510,000, 350,000 has been confirmed. And the remaining 160 you will see in the outstanding variables. Um, so the increase of 350, confirmed 350, is a difference of zero. Oops. <coughs> And back in December and February, we did not have an estimate for the referendum that was approved in April. And so you see a confirmed increase of 655000 in both expense and revenue. And that um, is, again, a difference from what was input, but it nets zero because it's both refer um, expense and revenue. Here we have the outstanding input variables, things that are still under consideration or we don't necessarily have an answer um, from Madison. The revenue limit um, increase per pupil back in December, we estimated a $75 increase. That equates to about $300,000. Our updated prediction is zero per pupil or a decrease in revenue for 1516 of 300,000. The categorical aid Back in December, the input variable was 150,000. We predict that that'll um, stay that way. Uh, we'll be back in the, in the budget for the state and a difference of zero. And then the remaining staffing that pre was presented in February at 160,000. Uh, we are just leaving it on here as a um, updated prediction. 
with a difference of zero, and we understand that those positions are still under consideration by the board. So after February's um, budget memo spreadsheet presentation by Dale, the governor announced his budget, and um, the district was facing a potential $900,000 uh, decrease in revenue for next year. That's a combination of the um, $75 per pupil on the revenue limit formula and the $150 per pupil in categorical aid. So the budget memo spreadsheet was predicting almost a balanced budget at around $3,600 um, revenue less expenses. Once the governor announced his proposal, we were looking at an $896,000 deficit going into the new year. We know now that that's not going to happen to that extent. And so with the confirmed input variables that I presented, we are um, positive approximately 470000 With the outstanding variables or lack of any new money on the revenue limit formula per pupil, we are looking at a potential uh, decrease of 300000 for a balance of 170000 surplus. As you are aware, 170,000 could be gone in a flash. It represents less than half a percent of our total general fund budget. It's a very small amount, even though it sounds like a large amount. So on the screen now shows the variables of um, things that could quickly eat up that $170,000 surplus that we're projecting. The state legislature is still in session, and so that's a, a variable that's out there. Um, particular staffing, that 160000 that was proposed is still under consideration. We have staff vacancies that are not filled yet, so we don't always know at what level they will come in and what wages um, or benefits that they will be eligible for. The health insurance selection um, is always a wild card, whether or not people move from, for example, single to family coverage um, can create a big impact on district contributions to premium. Fall enrollment um, is always a variable as well, and we do not have our fiscal year 2015 audited financial position. We should have that um, information near the end of August, first part of September. And then finally, the non-benefit insurance premiums. This um, more specifically relates to the fact that we withdrew from the local government property insurance fund that's being dissolved. If you recall, they were going to increase the premium 129% and then they're closing at the end of next year. Um, we are currently looking over quotes for new property insurance and the quotes indicate 35 to 40,000 greater than the current year premium, but not 129%. So we'll see savings um, over what we would have if we stayed with the um, local government fund. <coughs> Questions by the board? Are there any questions? I just Kate. have a question. Yep. <clears throat> does the when you put variables on there, does fall enrollment also include <clears throat> students that request to go to other districts? We wait to see that for a certain date, or is it just how many we when we project fall enrollment, we typically do a cohort survival. Can you moving, explain that to moving me? one grade to the next grade level. Gotcha. So the prediction is really on kindergarten enrollment and the numbers that the sites see coming in for registration. Um, I don't have enough experience here, Kate, to answer all of those questions, but sure. I, I do know we have like a two to one open enrollment out. Right. And so if we were, and that's been pretty consistent. So if we use cohort survival of the grade level to the next grade level, it can kind of assume the in and out, um, the net loss that we continue to have. Okay. It does not have any projection on, um, like the governor's proposal to increase the vouchers. Exactly. All right. Thank you. And I think there's a small increase, be and has yeah. been. It's like a 1.2 percent. Yeah. 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 Y
percent increase in enrollment that does take into account the losses that we have Gary shaking his head yeah so at least that's how we've done it the last few years okay. any other questions good job great job thank you Excellent. thank you numbers look a lot better than they did a few months ago they do look a lot better and yes. so a lot of that is the um, the, the funding that they did reinstate you know it was one of those things where they said oh we're gonna come in at this and now we're supposed to be so thankful because they reinstated it but you know they just really reinstated to what it was thankfully no increases which there are we know there's always those increased costs so I see Melissa coming forward she must gonna be helping us out with educational assistant at Evergreen all right um, so on June 8th um, Anita and Dale and myself met with um, the members of um, the Association for the Hope Group which is our secretaries and um, the accounting payroll specialists and met to negotiate the 1516 base wages so for July 1st 2015 through June 30th 2016 um, we did agree and the group ratified a 1.62 uh, percent base wage increase that is a cost equivalent when you take out the longevity um, which is what we typically do with all of our groups it is a 1.51 percent base wage increase which comes out to a 26 cent per hour um, across the board classification increase for that year so anything on the educational mm. assistant on evergreen um, the educational assistant for evergreen we have some increased needs um, in the special ed program for um, a, what grade level I think it's kindergarten so um, we would like to add one more educational assistant to help out with the kids at Evergreen so. and I think he had Julie down for that and she's not here but I think that is not on the agenda this evening right on consent so yep, I think we're gonna put that on next the meeting. next meeting so the hope is the is base tonight. wages though yes. yes so any questions on either of those thank you Melissa thank you okay then we are at consent agenda items so if you would like any ad item um, withdrawn or selected out so that we can discuss it individually um, please do so at this time otherwise I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented I would so move is there a second I'll second, second. okay motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented mm -hmm. all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion carries then board member reports and discussion I'll call on board members for any committee reports or comments that they'd like to make um, Kate Mayer um, I'll make this brief but <clears throat> every time something's in our package I try to read everything so I read every single handbook from every single school <laughs> and there's some really cool stuff in there and it also amazes me that as I look at all the language in it I know a lot of it is legalese that you put in there and it needs to be that way but somebody works a long time on that and so just a message to administration please thank whoever does that but there are just some neat things again this is stuff I want the public to hear because we know thousands listen to the public broadcasts of our board meetings so as they do yeah peace Gary <laughs> um, the curriculum in early childhood um, is just amazing to me all the active involvement and in what your mission statement is um, the library that you have for parents that you have set up um, and I had a quick question for you um, there's a thing about immunization and there's a bunch in the country right now talking about should parents do it do we have a percentage number of how many of our kids are not immunized at all or not it might not be a question you can answer but okay so that would be something that you can sure. email me I mean you can get that yeah okay um, elementary schools I love the fact that everybody has the same handbook I find that very um, easy for parents in case they moved within the district um, I like the balance that you write about with technology but you you give that equal um, praise in terms of thinking process the physical the emotional and the character development of our kids I think that's profound I love it middle school um, I notice a big difference between middle school and high school because it's 
middle school and high school. <laughs> it's like, you know, and that's the way it has to be. Um, but it's very clearly understood, and I think if parents needed to look something up, it's all right there. Um, a silly thing, maybe, but in middle school, the kids can check out six books. That's really cool. That's pretty rare. That must mean our LMC is pretty well stocked. I like that. Um, yeah, in high school, the pride card, that's pretty cool. That, that comes out on Fridays. Um, I think that's a very cool thing to give our kids some, just some oomph. So, tried to do that fast, but I do like to read them because I know people work so they long do. in front of us. Thank you. Thank You're you, Kate. welcome. Um, Lisa Collins. Um, I just wanted to mention, um, obviously, that did a wonderful job at presenting the budget proposal. Um, but I wanted to add one other thing. Um, there's kind of an upcoming event that I think would be something really interesting for folks to, to think about, um, Rebuilding for Learning, um, which is basically a summit. Um, every year, it's the fifth year. Um, it's put on by a group called the Lacrosse Partners in Learning, um, and it's kind of a collaboration of the Lacrosse School District, Lacrosse County, um, and different agencies. And it's coming up pretty quickly, um, August 11th, and it's held at it's a Tuesday from 7:30 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. And it's really great. Um, last year was on trauma-informed care. This year it's going to be on, um, the issues are going to be involving examining race, um, ethnic diversity, poverty, uh, perseverance, and community um, collaboration. And Dr. Stephen, Stephen West is a superintendent of Winona um, Public Schools. And also they'll be having Elizabeth Hudson, who's the director um, in Wisconsin of the Office of Children's Mental Health. So it's free, which is fabulous. Um, I attended la the last several years and really appreciated that uh, perspective from, and they're encouraging all different districts to come and learn more and, and collaborate with each other. Um, so it's a free, it's one of those free um, workshops. So I just wanted to share that. Can I ask a question on Thank what you. you just said? Yep. Is that okay right now? Um, Family Policy Board today was talking about this and I asked the question, do all of our administrators and teachers get notification of this event? And for some reason, I think the answer is no, because I know when we've asked before, somebody had to send them a notification of that. Would it be helpful if... Well, my thought was to send it, you know, to the administrative office and... And they could shoot it out right. to staff. Do okay. we allow that policy? Because in Alaska, they don't. Mm. They will not do mass emailings from oh. outside. I think if there's something that the district administrator feels is relevant to the school district, they would send okay. something like that out, certainly. All right. Yeah, because I, I think the word doesn't get out all the time, and it's incredible. It's an incredible workshop. It's probably no easier to get it out to administrators, especially year-round, yes. where school year people don't always access their right. school email in the off years. But. Thanks. Okay, um, Tim Menninger. Uh, I really have very little this evening to add other than uh, you know where I'm going with this. There are only two more board meetings after tonight before fall sports start, so that's how quickly summer is going. It is. It is. Um, Gary Dunlap. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to wish Dale Carson, uh, Carlson the very best. Uh, he's indeed a class act, and I personally am going to miss him and not have him around. And then uh, one other additional thing, I'd like to thank all the volunteers that are around in the, in the neighborhoods and in the uh, city of Holman this summer. Everywhere you go, it seems like there's hundreds of volunteers. Uh, the Little League baseball team, there's hundreds of kids playing baseball. We had a tournament in uh, Holman this weekend, and, and uh, Holman won the tournament, which is not unusual because we had four 14 and under teams in the tournament. Uh, it just seems like that if the kids want to play and they want to do something, a soccer, volleyball, uh, the nasty weightlifting program going out to high school, it's just the kids are all busy and all, and all uh, getting in shape and, and doing things they want. It seems like uh, my grandchildren uh, almost have too much to do. They have to make choices this summer on, on what, they, what they think is their favorite thing. So I just want to thank everybody out there that's volunteering and, and doing all the wonderful things for our kids. 
that's all I have. Hey, thank you. Tom Cruz. Yeah, I, I, I want to mimic what Gary's saying. I wanted to say I uh, miss working with Dale. He's a great guy. I uh, got a nice letter from him, a little card. I think we all probably got that. That was nice. And, uh, and I didn't watch a lot, some of the baseball games. And they were pretty funny this weekend. So um, the coach is yelling at the kids. They pick the ball up. They got to <laughs> stare at it. It's funny. <laughs> but uh, <yeah. laughs> they get all fired up. But, uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to working with Chris when she comes on board. So um, anyway, um, so I thought I'll have to say. Thank you. Um, Jeff Young? Uh, I would like to acknowledge all the sports also. Uh, for the, like Personally, uh, the soccer team has already did uh, two tournaments during these weekends, and we're working really hard like every day to get ready for the season. and. Like nasty, um, all the students are doing that, are trying to improve their game, and we just want to make uh, Holman proud. So that's all I have to say for today. Can somebody tell me what nasty check. means? Because I'm like, that's a no. funny name. No. What does that mean? What does it yeah, stand for? Find nasty. What do you mean nasty? I don't know what it means. But yeah. yeah the kids. For youth. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, N A S T I E. Thank you. Yeah. Good okay, question. it is good question. My grandson gets up at six o'clock and goes to list. Cool. Races. Okay. Well, I have a couple things. Thank you, Jeff. I have a couple things. I know we've been trying to set a date for September for our board um, retreat with Dr. Mueller, and what it's narrowing it down. I've been talking with Paul. Um, and it looks like the week of September 14th and 15th or any time the week of the 21st. But I'd like to get your feeling, would you prefer, I know we've got some folks that are working um, and some have offered to maybe take a day off, but you know, I was wondering if maybe a half a day, if we're doing it this far in advance, where we could either go from like 12.30 until eight o'clock or something like that, or we could do two consecutive evenings, the 14th and the 15th after work, we'd, you know, at, or at least 4.30, something like that, so it'd be earlier. What would your preference be? Because we need some guidance, and then I think what we're gonna try to do is set the date and then hold to it. I think it's a really important thing, but, so people prefer to go two consecutive nights? Were, were weekends taken off the table then for sure? Kind of the weekends were, yeah, we were having a really hard time with that weekend. We could do it Saturday but couldn't get the Friday or something like that, so. I, I would be more than happy to take a half day of vacation and do just one long day. day. Yeah. Okay. The week of the 21st is out for me. That so the 14th or the 15th of September? Um, at this far in advance, just off the top of my head, those would be better because I know okay. the week of the 21st is out. Is out. Okay. So, Gary, yeah, I see nodding. Teacher. And, Lisa, you and Tom. Tom, I know you're more flexible as a self-employed, but, Lisa, do you think it with this much can, notice? So why don't I go back and take a, and send you an email, and I'll copy Christina on it, and we'll get that date set then this week um, so that we can get it on your calendars and you can do your requests. So hopefully that will really work. Good. Yeah, I think a half a day would be, uh, and then into the evening, one consecutive kind of thing there too. Um, Christina, I know that we've given a couple chances for folks. Um, the committees, I think everybody has said that they would do the committees as they did last year. So if you want to get out an updated thing, mm -hmm. just to clarify, chairman is set by the board president, so we would continue on. I didn't hear anyone saying they didn't want to be chairman again. So um, we would continue on with um, the same chairman, Tim. We could change that in our group if you would like. <laughs> It's well. I was. If you would like. Yes. <laughs> so Gary, you're the other board member there. Are Are you okay with that? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. We'll do that then. <laughs> Buildings and grounds. If you want to designate um, Gary for a chair, that would be great. And then I have been this Holman Area Community Center project. You know, we saw this past week that the village of Holman came on to support it with a half a million dollars in pledges um, for senior programming. Um, it is an intergenerational, so I think the feeling was there's going to be a lot of support for the youth side of it, and this is to ensure that the facility is right for some of the senior programming that the village does and would like to do um, in this building. As a school district, because it's not right on our site, we are looking for ways, of course, and we always have um, needs in build-in facility needs, um, you know, for the, the school district to be a partner. 
Um, and so I know we're looking for some ideas and we've got some folks that have some ideas, but I just wanted to keep you abreast of that, that we, I have been approached by a couple um, staff that said they've got some ideas that they would like to utilize. You know, the 4K program is always looking for additional space. High school program um, is, uh, they've got a couple different things, a um, couple different needs, areas of interest, those kind of things. So uh, we just want to keep that. That would be something we'd be talking about with buildings and grounds, of course, or those kind of things. But eventually, um, you know, I keep telling them that the school district is, wants to support them in whatever means we can. It would be very unlikely, and I've said that to them, that we would be able to provide any outright dollar amounts because of um, the way that our budgets are built right now anyway. But that certainly we could be a partner in programming and providing programming possibly, um, and then utilization of spaces. As I had that discussion, it's interesting because Gary's talking about all these youth sports that are happening. One of the meetings I attended was with all of representatives from all of the youth sports in the area um, to talk about, you know, with the one gym at the community center, they really are looking for additional um, gym use. And, um, you know, we had a couple bugs, some things I'd like to maybe chat about with a, the policy that we have related to usage. Um, you know, one of our, our on -site uh, yeah, our on-site, when uh, the youth sports use our buildings, you know, we've initiated some new policies and one of them was, you know, we get reimbursed for whatever our direct costs are. So if we have to hire a custodian in the weekend and they're using the building. And there was a, an example, and I just share this as, a, as an example, um, but our person called in sick, so we had to bring someone in that had been working and so they had to overtime it was overtime for that person and we passed that on to the youth group and I just didn't feel like that was how we might want to do those kind of things so just some of those pieces of feedback that I you know that I've been hearing but as we talk about um, space and Gary's talking about fields and stuff I don't think we're ready to build a new gym here yet or I don't think the community center is probably going to add but there's a lot of need for um, outside fields and there's been an interest in outside fields um, so we've got some plans that eventually we'll have some fields north of here of the high school and I said to the groups come you know come to the district with a proposal if you want to put a field in and you pay for the irrigation and all of that let's talk about it so just some of those things are hopefully going to happen and it was a p really positive although it was a community center meeting it's talked about the school district a lot and so but some really good feedback and you're right Gary the, every person around that table was a c great community volunteer that's probably giving hundreds of hours because they're the leadership in all of those groups and there was everything was represented soccer and tennis and basketball and football and and just everything it, it was in swimming I mean everything was there so it was really fun to see and Holman is going to be continuing to grow and I see some things happening with some of the subdivisions um, growth and th it's just going to continue to grow 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 so I think we we all feel positive about being partners with those kind of organizations because there are kids you know there are youth and if we can keep them busy in positive things not only in the community center but in the athletic fields too, I think that's a good thing for us to look at. So just wanted to share those experiences with you. Um, I would note that we have a board meeting July 13th. July 27th, I will not be here, but um, Anita is already aware of that. Um, a policy for review, the acceptable use policy was in your packet. It's there because of the one-to-one. -one. It will be going, it's one of the first policies that will be going to the um, Student Achievement and Learning Committee in the fall. And they will be looking to see if it is appropriate for the one-to-one um, -one integration implementation. And so if you see anything in there, um, I think that's the key area they'll be looking at is to make sure that um, it is strong enough for the implementation of that and spells out things like firewalls and um, security and those sorts of things that we're doing um, with at our buildings but if they take those those tools home with them what will happen when they take them home and so that's why that's there I don't know if anyone has anything any questions about that oh, that was a good summary yeah. of what okay and then board meeting reflection it's a short one and so I would entertain a motion to adjourn
I'll so move. <laughs> <laughs> Gary and Tom seconds. In Tom. Yeah. So motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. nay. Motion adjourn. Motion. Or me, motion passes. We are adjourned. <laughs>